If you're wondering what those tiny bubbles are, then you're in the right video. Uh, the tiny bubbles that plants can produce in our freshwater aquariums uh, is often called purling or to purl. Uh, that's because the tiny bubbles look like pearls. Uh, but why do plants do this? And how, or more, more likely, why don't plants do this? It's a very beautiful sight to see. Um, and it's something that many people who are keeping aquarium plants uh, strive for because people often um, relate purling plants to healthy plants. Uh, while that's true, purling plants are working at their, um, at their best to convert uh, the light and nutrients into uh, oxygen and glucose, often referred to as photosynthesis. But plants that do not purl, purl are not unhealthy. They are also uh, perfectly healthy or can be, uh, but that, uh, not purling is not a sign you should be looking for to determine whether your plant is healthy or not. So why do aquarium plants purl? Purling is when aquarium plants uh, produce oxygen at a higher rate than uh, can be dissolved uh, into your aquarium water. Uh, that means that if a plant is producing at a rate of 10 oxygen per second and your water can only uh, absorb uh, 6 then there's excess oxygen. The numbers do not uh, are not correct but that's the principle behind this. Uh, often people think that uh, plants purl when the aquarium water is saturated in oxygen and that means uh, that aquarium Plants can get rid of their oxygen because all the oxygen that they produce uh, cannot be dissolved in the aquarium water and therefore um, turns into gas or small gas bubbles. That's not the case actually because then how could you explain a plant purling in an enormous aquarium? Instead it's what we just talked about, plants producing oxygen at a rate that's higher than can be absorbed through uh, gas diffusion by the aquarium water. So uh, when do plants purl? Very good question. Uh, plants purl when they have uh, access to plenty of light. So high light is often a factor that causes plants to purl. Uh, access to plenty of nutrients and access to plenty of CO2. Those are the three things that plants need to grow. And when they've only got a little of it or just regular amounts of each three components, then the plant's perfectly happy. It has all the components it needs to produce uh, sugars and CO2 using photosynthesis, but the rate at which the oxygen is produced isn't that high. So if um, you want to get your plants to purl, you need to make sure there's plenty, there's a surplus of each uh, of all three components. Now, aquarium light is pretty easy to increase. You just turn up the light or add more light or increase the duration of the light. However, the duration is not really accurate because it needs to be the intensity of light that's higher. Uh, nutrients is also easy, you just add fertilizer, but then there's CO2. And in a regular freshwater aquarium, there's some CO2 present dissolved in the water and it just got there uh, through diffusion with the outside air but that's not enough carbon dioxide for optimal plant growth and in nature that's not a problem there's a lot of CO2 there but in our freshwater aquariums there's just not that much present so what we as fish keepers can do is we can choose to inject additional CO2 many people have got a uh, CO2 cylinder below uh, in their aquarium and they uh, inject bubbles of CO2 into their aquarium water to raise the CO2 level for their plants in order to um, often uh, achieve good growing plants that have access to sufficient CO2 and that eventually start purling. So uh, like we said plants that do not purl are also healthy and I would actually often recommend against chasing purling plants because what you do is you increase the light and you increase the CO2 and you add more nutrients 
and if one of those three components is out of balance then algae will be the first to consume it so if there's too much light but not enough nutrients or carbon dioxide you will have algae if there's too much uh, co2 or a, a, a fluctuation of co2 level in your aquarium water that's too high you'll get algae it's just very uh, hard to keep all three components balanced uh, and not fall victim to a, a giant algae bloom in your aquarium there are also there's also a hack that i want to show you um, to achieve um, to achieve purling plants even when you don't have additional co2 because in a regular aquarium just like mine right here we've got the light lights often set uh, we've also got nutrients because I add liquid fertilizer weekly but CO2 is often lacking and I currently don't have CO2 uh, that's injected into my aquarium. So how can we temporarily raise the amount of dissolved carbon dioxide in our aquarium? That often goes through this. This is a bottle, uh, well it's an empty bottle, but you can buy... Um, uh, carbonated water uh, in your supermarket and you can add this to your aquarium to temporarily boost the amount of dissolved carbon dioxide in your aquarium so so uh, i've got this which is part of a uh, system that makes its own carbonated water maybe you have something like it but it's just tap water with additional carbon dioxide. Before I started recording, I added a bottle of carbonated uh, water in my aquarium and I don't see an effect yet. That doesn't mean the heck isn't working because I've seen other people do this. It just means that maybe I've not added enough CO2 or my light's not bright enough because I don't have a very bright light on my aquarium. Often people see their plants purling after a giant water change and that might be the case for you as well why do your plants only purl after you've done a 25 or 50 or maybe even more than 50 percent water change that's because the tap water that you are injecting or replacing uh, in your aquarium you're taking out the old water and adding new tap water uh, in your aquarium is actually very high in carbon dioxide and that way uh, your plants have got a lot of light, they've got the nutrients and then for a short period of time after you're d you've done a water change they've also got the CO2 to start cranking out that oxygen um, and that's why after a giant water change you also sometimes see your plants purling. If you're ready to learn more stuff like this I've got a lot of videos on my channel please hit that subscribe button make sure you leave a like and if you've got any questions at all, make sure to drop them in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer them as soon as I can. Cheers guys, see you in the next video.